Fear is like fire. If not controlled, it could burn down everything around you. But if used properly, it can fuel you to reach your highest potential. My mentor, Customado, told me the only thing that separates the hero from being a coward is what the hero does that makes him the hero, and what the coward doesn't do that makes him the coward. They both have fear, but with this fear, something is ignited in the hero. When fear challenges you, what will you do? Introducing Tyson Pro. All the knockouts with the right hand, but the rich look good on the left hand. Go marry the queen of the Netherlands. Benny Frank gonna be the best man. Try to tell you way too many times. You beat him? Score. Good to see you. Hello, this is Mike Tyson for another amazing episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Mike Tyson. I'm who kids. And who we have here today is extremely special. He drops them all. He's the man, Jake Paul. Talk to me, baby. Talk, yeah, what's talk. Good, what's good, what's good, what's good? Great fight the other night with Nate. Thank you, man. How do you feel? You sore or anything? My, a little sore, just like the normal fight soreness. It's memory of tense, huh? Yeah, not, like, not too bad, though. I'm feeling good. Just have been going nonstop since then, and uh, yeah, man, trying to like just like soak it all in. But I'm very, very happy with the performance, the outcome, the best I've ever felt in the ring. So everything's been been fun since that moment. What's next, man? I guess this. I guess maybe MMA. You know, tell me about <laughs> rematch. <laughs> rematch. Have you ever trained <laughs> MMA before? No, I mean like joking around. Like I've done like two or three like jujitsu little classes, like. Just for like some content to like troll people that I was gonna do MMA, and but obviously I was a high school wrestler like Ohio Division One, so I have that background. But I think not a lot of boxers have gone over besides like Amanda Serrano, maybe some others, but and actually done MMA fights. So I want to go into their sport and their craft because they keep on making excuses. They're like, oh. It's boxing. It's different. Well, what happens when I go in and beat Nate Diaz in his own craft? Oh God, I like to see that happen. Yeah, that's I what like I'm to saying. see that happen. <clears throat> so listen, what do you think? Because I had a, um, I like to call it a discussion, a debate. <clears throat> what do you think about people thinking about you're not really, um, what's that word, relevant and stuff? You're not a real fighter. Because I had a discussion with somebody about that. And they said I was using the wrong word as saving boxing. <laughs> oh, and he shit. had also said if I had another opportunity to change that word, I would have. Mm. And so um, I had to write him back and explain to him, you never drew 100 million people or 70 million people <laughs> to the fight, have you? And you're a professional champ. You're a champ of the world. And you've never been able to do that. So that means he's helping boxing. You never helped boxing before. Mm. Boxing <laughs> helped you. And so that's changing the game. Do you think you're changing boxing? Do you think you're bringing a, um, a different um, demographics to boxing? Yeah, I think shining a new light on it and promoting it in a different way and bringing a new fan base to it that didn't really care. And a big new fan base, you know, like... My, my built-in followings are around like 75 million, 80 million. And so they're all now getting exposed to boxing for the first time mm. and falling in love with it because of my story, because they care about me, as well as other influencers. And it's this, this whole movement where this new uh, generation of kids now all of a sudden cares about fighting. They care about training. They care about the technique, the jab. Like, how is he throwing? How is he looking? How is his cardio? How is his stamina? Who are his coaches? How is he looking? What is his footwork? And these are 13-year-old kids who are now obsessed with the sport, and there's millions of them. And over the past... You know, four years, if you look four years ago, boxing like wasn't in the conversation in even the top 10 sports in America. And now it's like number three for the younger generation. Um, so th definitely the impact in terms of just the numbers is there. The, the pay-per-view numbers are there. So obviously there's interest. But mo most importantly, regardless of my fights is what I'm doing to help other fighters and 
growing their platforms like Amanda Serrano, getting her the paydays, you know, putting Ashton Silva in the spotlight. Well, exactly. That's what well, they didn't understand. You coming in this, on the scene bring more revenue to the sport. Yep. You know, and they don't understand that because all they know how to do is fight. No, exactly. And and it's a business first, actually. The, the fight is comes second. All all of the business is the media, the lead up, the promotion, the negotiations, the marketing, and then the fight is the last thing that happens. I know, but none of that mark, none of that means nothing. You can't bring the people in the seats. Exactly. All that stuff you just said don't mean shit if you can't pack the house. And you so, pack the house. So that's, all that stuff is out of the picture for you. And that's what I wanted to do is bring that difference into the sport. And the sport saved me out of like a very, very dark place in a dark time and gave me routine and discipline and mm -hmm. put my life back on track. And who knows where I'd be without boxing. So that's why my goal has always been to give everything I can back to this sport. And to help others because I love this sport. It gives me so show, much joy, show. so much passion, so much purpose. And so if someone else out there can experience that and one person, even just one person takes up the sport of boxing and it changes their life forever or they become the next Mike Tyson or Ali, whatever it might be. If I can have any effect or touch on that, that then I can die happy. And man, I just like... The sport needs a lot of work. Like, I'm just scratching the surface of what I'm going to accomplish in terms of changing this sport because there's a lot that needs to be worked on uh, so that fighters specifically can benefit more because they're taking advantage of their side. Yeah, I wanted to ask you that. What do you think about the corrupt state of boxing? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the most, one of the most corrupt businesses in the world. Lots of sharks, lots of people who don't care about their business reputation. They can get away with things in other businesses that normally If you're you a thief in can't. boxing, you have a good reputation. That's how it works. Yeah, no, and, and so many fighters are taken advantage of when they're young, signing to these, like, 10, 15 fight deals for this, like, guaranteed money, and then they're locked in, and their promoters take advantage of And they're not of getting them. the money they were guaranteed. And they're not getting fights. We'll give you 10 fights, but as soon as you get to nine fights... We're not fighting you anymore. Oh, hell so then they're just stuck. What? They're just stuck in the contract, and it happens like time and time and time again. It's a form of slavery. They own you. Yeah, mm -hmm. they own you. It's it's like almost it's worse than than record labels, and they take advantage of these kids because there's a, a lot of the people are from you know like inner cities, and there's not like tons of financial literacy and oh, wow. all this crazy shit, and so that's these evil shark businessmen who are like preying on these kids and these families um, who desperately need the, the, the money and then the, the, all of a sudden they're one of the biggest boxing stars in the world and they're getting paid you know like ten thousand dollars for a fight when they should be making millions and there's no way for them to get out of it and there's just all these crazy things and it, it's just bad and people are in this business just looking to, to make money over anything really. In the beginning, you were in that kind of deal, or how did you get out of that, like, to avoid that? No, I, I wasn't in that deal, but I I came in from a different standpoint where I, okay. where I didn't need that. And I understand, I also understand why fighters, you know, take that, because at first, they're like, I need this money. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, the, the biggest thing is to, maybe there's a 17-year-old fighter watching right now who's about to turn 18, who's about to be offered a 10-fight contract. Like, don't do it. No way. <laughs> like, build your value. Mm. Build your value you make the and promoters, be patient. If you have promoters, you got to make them compete against one another. Exactly. Exactly. And and be patient. Take it fight by fight. And that, and that moment will come um, for sure. But, yeah, it's... it's there's a lot of sharks in boxing and a lot of shady people, and you just yeah, you got to be careful. But are, are there famous like um, like sharks out there that we need to be worried about? Or yeah, <laughs> you want, that's you know, how, that's you want to save. That's a how they attract the fighters by being famous. Yeah, <laughs> you know you see Don with all the hey, nah, 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 hey, I want to be, <laughs> be associated with that. Yeah, they want to get in the same rooms with these mm. people. And, and the thing is, the the reason why I'm shaking up the game so much is because I don't need the money from promotion. Every Everything I've put, I've, I've lost money from my promotional company oh, wow. in terms of just my time added, all the work I do. All It's like break even at best, but 
it's simply for the love of the sport. Me and my promotional partner do it because we want to help these other fighters realize their dreams and, and grow. And yes, we're like we break even, but it's like these other promoters do it for their living. Oh. That's how they f- put family their family's food on the table. Mm. So they're gonna be greedy. They're gonna want more and more and more. This is like a side quest for me and my other partner. He's already could retire i could retire so we're not doing this out of the need for money where all the other promoters that's their main thing on how they make money and that's why i'm shaking up the game so much giving better deals taking care of the fighters more getting them the fights they want they're not locked into our one contract where you have to fight on this broadcast we could fight on the zone we could fight on showtime we could fight on espn we could do whatever we want and so that's how we're like shaking up the game and it's it's because we don't need the money we don't care about the money it's like okay cool someone fights for five million dollars and we make a percentage of that like it's not like life-changing money for either me or my partner nikisa so we're just doing it to make the sport a better place that's that's gonna be very (coughs) difficult but you know it is (laughs) it is it is but someone's got to do it and i believe that the the more people that talk about it, the bigger the movement gets, the, the more the game has changed, and the bigger the sport grows, it, it sparks something to start to change. And uh, I believe that it's going to help the sport. In, in a decade, we're going to see a different sport because of what we're doing, I believe. I think so, too. Is, is it an ongoing thing for Jake Paul to go against like the boxing enthusiasts or the fight experts where what you're doing is not tradition. It's just like you're going against the grain. It's not real, like traditional boxing or. I guess, yeah, it's it's different, right? But that's what the sport needed because whatever was happening before wasn't. There's no excitement. No yeah, no. there wasn't garnering the interest. <laughs> um, UFC was killing them. Yeah, and and now look at like boxing's back and, and bigger and dominating UFC and just just analytically this year. So, um, yeah, like sh- people want to see something they've never seen before. That's. I mean, you oh, bust your very, ass. Very do, do you get mad at certain times when you read the articles? Like, you know, do you get pissed off yourself? It or? must be everybody. Do I did a little bit? We all do. Yeah, like they just don't understand what goes into it, and then you have like the uh, it never boxed before. Yeah, they, you have like the the fat people like on the couch who are like <laughs> saying all this shit about t- telling me how to box or telling me, <laughs> you know, he didn't mean fat people in a uh, you know what I mean in a disrespectful way. <laughs> yes, the ones that lay on the couch and do nothing but criticize people. Yeah, no, and they're just like on Twitter like all the time, like r- you know, saying things about people, but they don't ever actually do anything or know how to fight or they then they make excuses for all of my opponents it's on friday night before the fight nate diaz is gonna kick jake paul's ass jake's a bitch fuck him da 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 nate's a dog never been knocked out he's gonna out cardio jake then when i absolutely dominate him it's oh man like Nate, you know, is an MMA fighter. He does jujitsu. Oh, they're giving him that we, excuse. We would say, yeah, like, bro, like, shut up. Look, this is this, these are the people. What? Oh hell! He needs to start throwing that jab more. It's like these are the type. Of when people. did the last whale tell you? It's like look at this guy, man. These are the people when people like talk to me on Twitter about shit. Like this is literally what I envision. I'm shit, like, when, when he died, they're gonna have to cut him out of the wall. To get him that's out. what I'm saying. You know, they have to cut. The, you know, when they cut the door, they cut the wall out and they throw this big nigga out and he gets excuse me and he can't. Fit the door no more because he's been there fucking eating. His heart blew up. They gotta get. They gotta cut the wall out. You know you ever seen that? They the got to get the fire. You ever seen that before? Up? I haven't seen like a nine hundred yeah. pound motherfucker die and they, they can't fit oh, through the door. Oh yeah, they, they, they got to see it. They bring in the whole like pickup they, truck, yeah, get them out of their everything. ambulance. They bury them in a That's piano case, up. right? When they bury them in piano cases and shit. Yeah. Yo, I, I thought you were going to, like, actually get it over with on the first round. With me, too. A lot. That's what my family says, it's over. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> what was your assessment of Nate Diaz, in, like, in the beginning of the rounds? I mean, just a warrior. Uh, just a warrior, unorthodox. 
throwing punches from all angles nonstop, taking in mm. insane amounts of damage. I don't know how he survived the first yeah, round. He, he, yeah, I don't know how he. Uh, but yeah, like that's that's what he's known for. He's a it's dog. Tough and durable. He's a dog. All I mean, respect. I went to him. all the way to the end, man. All the way, all ten rounds. How did that feel, man? That was super like exhausting. No, but that's like, good. You get comfortable going ten rounds. You get comfortable. Go. Don't feel discouraged. You don't knock everybody out. You're not gonna knock everybody out. Get comfortable going ten. What kind of cardio? Because if you get comfortable going ten, that dive exhausting. Yeah, no, Drop. that's what I loved about it is I signed up for 10 rounds and then actually went 10 rounds, and that experience is priceless, especially... And you knocked them down. And throwing that many punches exactly. and just knowing that my gas tank, I could keep on going just no matter do what. It, the more the easier it becomes. Yeah, and, and doing it in sparring is one thing, but doing it under the lights is, is completely different. So that gave me, like, a lot of confidence moving forward, and I think it was great, great experience that I'm going to learn from. And and a lot of times, the the biggest, one of the biggest criticisms of my boxing has been, like, oh, well, his cardio, oh, well, his cardio. And, and in a lot of cases, they were right, because in sparring, I would feel comfortable, and then I'd get into the fight and just be, like, trying to load up too much, mm -hmm. and then I would, like, get tired, a little nerves, adrenaline. But even if they are right, Tom, they're not. No, but now they're not. They're, now they're not. I went back to the drawing board and figured it out, brought in a new strength and conditioning coach and just got my, my mind and everything right. And that was all the difference in the world. It was the new strength and conditioning coach, nutritionist. My diet was completely different for this fight. And my new head coach who pushed me 20, 25 rounds almost every single day in practice. And that was all the difference in the world. I went 10 rounds easy. Um, but I don't think I was being pushed hard enough before. So went back to the drawing board, and now my cardio is on point. Could have done 12 rounds. So what do you think about um, if you don't fight um, Nate, who would you fight next? Tommy. Yeah, I think the Tommy rematch is, is going to happen at some point. Um, you know, put him down on the canvas, split decision, and I, I oh, you're know. You're ready, you're ready. <laughs> I, I know. You're ready, like, telling us what you're going to do? No, yeah, like, he got, <laughs> like, he caught me at my worst, like, yeah. kudos to him, but I, I needed the loss. I'm not making excuses. It put mm. me on this new track of, like, having this insane amount of motivation and just being, like, super, super locked in where, where I wasn't that locked in before I was trying to cut corners and you just can't do that in the sport. Only oh, cheating yourself. When you're beating everyone, putting them down to the canvas, winning knockout of the year, $10 million here, $20 million there. Wow. You kind of are like, yeah, see ya. who's going to, who's <laughs> going to beat me? And then you get beat and then you're like, you're like oh shit. Fuck. <laughs> but when I, when I got beat, I started making more money. When I got beat, oh, the before they said nobody could beat hype, you. Yeah. But once I got beaten, there's a chance I could be beat now. So now people could bet. Oh, okay. You know, that's what that boxing's about, too. Money. It's all about money. If you're still invincible, you're beating everybody. Like, we thought, too, you're going to knock them out, this and that. When people think that, they don't really invest that much. But when they see you got a competition, competitiveness, and you mm. can lose, then they start betting. That's crazy, man. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That is crazy. I don't, just, I don't understand life. Yeah, I know. It's interesting because a lot of people that didn't want to fight me before when I lost, they were all in the emails like ready to fight. Now all that is yeah. money. All that there is money. That's yeah. all that is money. No, it, was a, it was a big weekend for the Pauls, man. I, your brother won in WWE, so how's it? Oh, feel tell me about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello. WWE. <laughs> uh, yeah, my uh, Logan Paul Logan. WWE. He won actually the same weekend. Let's see how he handled himself in that shit. How does it yeah, feel to have your brother on, like, uh, on ringside? Like, no, it's, it's, it's amazing, man. It's, it's very surreal. And the fact that both of our like, fights uh, fell on the same day. That's crazy. And getting to do it, he's in Detroit in front of 50,000 people, gets on a private, private jet. jet. I'm coming in in the tank to the arena. He shows up in the <laughs> WWE outfit. We walk out, little Dirk. I like, know. Every, everything about it was just a... A surreal moment and man just like standing there in the ring with him with my arm around him after the fight mm. just looking up and oh, seeing the shit. crowd look, like everybody look, 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 look. this Please. shit is fuck you fuck <laughs> you yeah he he's like a he's literally a superstar and just to see him perform on this stage and this level he's made for he's such an amazing entertainer exactly you know what i found out in my life look 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 Oh, 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 oh. See ya. Oh. <laughs> Suplex. What was that? Suplex? Dropped him. 
<laughs> he still kissed his girl after the soup. Like, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> no, and it's crazy how good he is at this, like, in just a short amount of time. I, I know he's going to be the WWE champion. Oh, that's going to be so cool. Because you got like, to You got to come out to him now. <laughs> yeah, no. It's, oh, oh, shit. <laughs> Ooh, that's oh. beautiful. He's athletic, too, so that's what makes it awesome. Yeah, the athleticism in this stuff is like. Wrestling is a lot of physical notch. shit, man. A lot like, of cardio. You can't sleep on that shit. You've done it before, right, Mike? You've been. You've been. I'm, in the, I'm in the Hall of Fame, bro. Wow. Where the fuck you been? I don't know if you physically like body slammed it. Yes, I'm in the Hall okay. of Fame. <laughs> You're in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's I've gangster. Never been done a boxing Hall of Fame, a wrestling Hall of wow. Fame. Wow. Hey, baby, I know. I, I, you I'm do just, it all. Yeah. <laughs> you do it all. <laughs> man, you are you are an amazing person, man. Well, thank you. Thank I wanted you. to say I wanted to say that like thank you for the opportunity that you gave me to be on the Nate Robinson card because none of this would have happened without that opportunity. Yeah, so I just want to say no, thank no, you. No, 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 no. It's not about me. It's about you taking advantage of the opportunity. Me giving you an opportunity, even though I do like you, don't mean I like you. And I just gave you an opportunity. Yeah, you took advantage of it. Yep. So it's capitalized all, it's all on about the moment. You. You only get one shot. Do not miss your no. chance. No. <laughs> <laughs> Will Eminem be somebody you wouldn't mind coming out to one of your? Yeah, listen. The fight was over when Eminem came out. The fight was over. <laughs> yeah. When they came out with Eminem, the fight was with over. With Terrence Crawford. Yeah. <laughs> the fight was over, man. The and he had the fishnet on like he was going to catch fight. a shark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Shit, man. I mean, you, you had a little dirt, man. Uh, not everybody knows his album's coming out because of your fight. Yeah, there's deluxe. That was crazy. Yeah, no. Well, I know who Little Dirk. Out. I know who Little Dirk is, but it's your like, fan base know who he is now. Yeah, Little Dirty Dirk. Yeah, we have we, <laughs> Dirty Dirk. I'm fucking with you, Dirk. Shout out, <laughs> Dirty Dirk. Is that a relationship, or you known Dirk for a while, or? Yeah, I've known Dirk for a long time. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't even know how many years, but we've always just like gone back and forth, talked, supported each other. He's he's a real one. He's a real one, like really good guy, really solid guy. And now finally we got to, you know, do do something together mm. in terms of just like business or whatever. So, um, man, it's it's cool. And it, to me, it was like the perfect song to walk out to just mm. like. Oh, my life. Oh, yeah, the J. Like, Cole joint. Yeah, that's hard. Trying to keep me down. So. Yeah, it goes with your whole aura. Yeah, exactly. I mean, coming from, uh, I mean, damn, Ohio, man. Like, Cleveland is cold, Cleveland man. is crazy, right? Like, yeah, Cleveland is very crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cleveland is very crazy. Don't go down there and think they're country bunking. Oh, it's <laughs> over. Yeah, don't go down there. Was it rough for, for you back then? I mean, I never he heard any Cleveland. Well, you live by the flats. Where well, you live, Lorraine? Mm -hmm. No, Westlake. Right. Westlake. Yeah, you you trained out there for a while. Yeah, right? I lived out there for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's cold, man. Uh, super cold, but it, I love it. I the love people, winter time too. The people are so nice. The food. You don't realize how good the food is until you go back. Mm. Frog like, legs. That, that's the first time I've eaten frog legs. Yeah, frog legs. Really? Like, frog, yeah, frog legs. Look some it's chicken. frog legs and Cleveland. Yeah, it's some yeah. chicken shit, man. What it tastes like? It tastes like chicken. Chicken it's shit. Like chicken. What? Like barbecue no, listen, chicken. <laughs> once you taste that muscle, that muscle's so good. Nah. Oh, you get the ketchup. You taste it a chick, you, you taste it a frog muscle. Before? Yeah. So we, me and my dad, like we, he had a cabin in Southern Ohio. And we would go there and catch these like giant bullfrogs. What? And we would make the frog legs fresh. And what's crazy is you would like cut off their legs and they would still be jumping around for like the next like three hours. No, nah, like, they, like they a would, responsive like, still reaction. Live. Yeah, like it was it was trippy. So as kids where these frogs are like jumping around, you're like tripped out. But so what do you put on it? Like hot sauce? It's like, like barbecue, <laughs> little maybe like some barbecue honey. I felt, I, was, I felt guilty I was eating that shit. What? Yeah, the fucking frog. The fucking frog. Good as a motherfucker. Especially if you're getting high and drinking and shit. Oh, no. It's like, yeah, good ass chicken. <laughs> Were you one of the ones that was pissed when LeBron left Cleveland? 
I was pissed as oh, a kid. Oh, you were pissed. Did you I burn his pissed. jersey? Everyone was pissed. <laughs> Everyone, that, like, it was like such a letdown. I remember the exact moment where I was watching Oh, you remember? <laughs> where were you? I was in my friend's house. We, we were supposed to be going to this workout, but we stopped because we saw what time it was. We go to his house. We're sitting there in the living room, and then, like, just the biggest letdown ever. Wow. And just But he came outrage. back and gave you a championship, didn't he? No, of course. Yeah, I, I think it made it all the, the story better in the long run. But at first, man, people He's going to have a documentary up the, up the ass, huh? You have a great documentary when it comes. Yeah, the, but that was a sad moment, man. I grew, up, I grew up watching LeBron going to the games, so he was— I remember when he was in high school. Yeah, St. Vincent, St. Mary. Yeah. Is uh, MGK part of your repertoire? Like, you know, like, uh, I know Trippy Red's from Canton, but that old region. Yeah, the there. Baseball Hall of Fame is in Canton, right? Yeah. Fo football. And the Baseball of Football. Football. Yeah, football. I've been there once before. Yeah. M MGK, uh, we're cool. Yeah, he's got his whole his whole squad. It's it's pretty He's not tight. cool with Eminem, though, is he? No, they got yeah, fight. Yeah, they have beef. Yeah, they have, like, rap beef. Yeah, they Why he gonna fuck beef. with Eminem? I don't know, man. He's gonna be in a bad shape, man. That's crazy. <laughs> you can't rap with that. That's the last guy in rap you want to mess Has with. Has anybody ever? I don't think anybody's ever like conquered Eminem in anything, man. No, he's. he's, he's I don't know. That, well, they had diss tracks back and forth, mm -hmm. and they're both like good. Like no, I don't. I don't think there was like a decisive winner in that rap. Beef. I gotta they both. They both like. I got gotta hear other. that. I gotta hear it, man. <laughs> both, they, I don't <laughs> see him in Eminem. It, it honestly just made like both of them way, way bigger, and just it was very mm -hmm. entertaining. But and no one like bodied the other one. It was just like very. It was good on both sides. Mm. It was a draw. It was a draw. <laughs> What's up with your rap career? You used to spit, right? Spit, baby. Yeah. Spit for us. Oh, you spit I'm dropping a song. I'm dropping a song. Uh, like this week, actually, yeah. All right, we need some lyrics. Boy. Give us some bars from that record. What's the what's the highlight? Of it? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. You fucked up. <laughs> That's it right there. Give, give us a bar, Mike. <laughs> give us a bar from that song, man. Before it comes out, go ahead. Um, let me say. I'm trying to think of like what the best part of the the Paul name were the billion of being it go like a synonym Cleveland couldn't see the vision that me and Braun made him witness it Kel's got them all listening I've been feeling like I'm Johnny Depp on the Flying Fox in the Caribbean the goal is never to be fitting in security keeping an F and N me and the money are best of friends <laughs> <laughs> Alec went out the collection. All the knockouts with the right hand, but the rich look good on the left hand. Go marry the queen of the Netherlands. Benny Frank gonna be the best man. Try to tell you way too many times. <laughs> Yo, hey, Mike, uh, man. We got a spinner. Yo, Mike, man. We got a spinner. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you were in my other rap video. Uh, rap yeah. You go, he's got a rap video here. This one's first class. And then it goes into the music video. Hard, dude. Holy shit, spitting! Next thing you know, you gonna be battling Eminem and Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Eminem and Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> nah, I'm good. I'm Listen. good. I just do it for fun. Like yeah. for me, it's just fun. Like I don't know why I've always loved it. And then I have a studio in my house in Puerto Rico, oh, and wow. I'm sitting there in training camp. There's nothing to do in training camp, so nothing. I'm just like, let's just make a song, see what happens. You gotta put out you a mixtape or something, put man. Put it out. Yeah. You and Khaled. You and Khaled could do it. Khaled. We the best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mike. Was Me and Jeff Paul. We the we best. The best. <laughs> we the best. <laughs> I love Khaled. He's in, he's so entertaining. Another guy who loves you is Snoop Dogg. Like, I, I've interviewed him before. We talked about, like, your fight you had before. And he said, yo, I fuck with him. Like, what's your relationship with Snoop Dogg? He's always been super cool. Like, just meeting him. We went to his compound. Got to hang out for him uh, a little bit. Uh, everyone around him is cool. His son Cordell is, is cool. Mm -hmm. Just a really good group of individuals. Good energy, positivity. And he's just, like, super wise. A lot to uh, learn from. And gives you that confidence in that boost i love people who like uplift others mm. and are super positive you you're like that you know just like you want everyone to win and snoop has that same energy and it's just like really really good to to be around and then his his business partner nick we've done some deals together and such oh, so wow. um 
yeah, it's just it's just really cool, and, and he's a legend, and he's supported me, and then I win him a bunch of money. We make some bets together against Dana, and just yeah, oh yeah, shit, it's so <laughs> Dana White. <laughs> yeah, but Snoop's always been uh, on on Team Paul, so respect. Shout out to Snoop. We we interviewed Dana, and he said he does not hate you, so that, that's good, right? We got that out of the way, right? Mm-hmm. He doesn't he does not hate Jake Paul. Yeah, look, I mean, I don't I don't hate him either. I just. Okay want him to pay fighters more hmm. you know now that the company is making billions of dollars a year and the fighters are only getting 15 percent of it that's really where all of it stems from is wanting higher fighter pay and long-term health care for the fighters and then obviously we've gotten into these exchanges that like muddies the purpose of hmm. why i've argued with him but you know, he throws out the fights are rigged. He's on steroids. Then I say something back about him being mm. bald and ugly. And then <laughs> it gets it it gets, just gets it gets like too messy. And then we start going like back and forth. <laughs> yeah. And then it just and then it's just like stupid. And then it's just like entertainment. But then yeah. like the message of why we started like why I started picking out he started the beef by saying like Oh, Ben Askren's gonna wipe the floor with him and saying all of the I think it was actually on this show where he bet like a million dollars. That's kind of like where the feud started. What the what what was it what kind of characteristic did Ben possess that make him think that uh, make um, Dana believe that he could win? Have you ever won a fight before? Ben? In MMA he was very, very dominant, uh-huh. but yeah, like I think people just at that point in time I hadn't beaten a real fighter. So there was still like a lot of questions unanswered. So I think Dana just had full belief that any fighter, real fighter could beat me. Um, And then after I win, he discredits me. And that's really where the feud kind of erupted from. I don't know him as a person, you know, Uh, I I don't know how he is. I just think that his fighters, the the fighter minimum in the UFC is $12,500. It should be at least 50000 If they made it 50000 that would change the smaller fighters' lives in a big, 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 big way. They wouldn't mm. have to work other jobs. They could afford gym fees. They could afford the proper food. Right now, they're working other jobs, barely scraping by. And if they change the fighter minim- minimum to 50000 per fight, it would only cost the UFC $20 million per year. Mm. But that $20 million would be going into the smaller fighters' pockets, and it's the world of a difference. Meanwhile, they're making $3 billion. What? 50, um, in what period make the 50? 50,000. 50, no, just for uh, per fight. This is, and this is why I've picked this fight with him is because if they're not guaranteed these fights, by the way. So if you're a small fighter, it's like random, and then they're like, oh, here's you have to do this fight to keep your UFC contract alive. Here's this fight. It's $12,500, and you might only fight once or twice in a year. So, yes, th- that's why they have to work other jobs. And to me, that's crazy. If they at least get one fight a year for 50000 then they could just focus on that. And it's going to make the sport a better place. More people training full-time. You know, like, their skills are going to be advanced. It's going to be more exciting fights. And it's, it's such a small expense for them that would seriously like change the game. And, and I've said I'm down to fight someone in the UFC as long as he, you don't even have to pay me. Just change the fighter minimum from 12500 to 50000 And it's, it, to me, it's easy, no long-term health care, all of these things. At first, what he's done for the sport is incredible. Mm-hmm. Like, kudos. We all appreciate it. We love MMA. But now that this sport and this league is the most profitable league in all of sports, pay your fighters more than 15% of the revenue. Well, you know, life is about, and no one likes me to hear that, life, life is about numbers and pimping and hoeing. You know, we're the fighters, we're the whores, and the promoters. <laughs> no, it's true. No, I feel it. No, it's true. Fighters, athletes are nothing but whores. Wow. No, it's true. Definitely fighters. You know, yeah. I mean, maybe not the football players because they get paid for fighters when you first start. I didn't fight. I didn't get paid for three fights when I first started fighting oh, wow. pro. Yeah, when I, when I met Amanda Serrano and her record at the time when I met her was like 38 and 1, 37 and 1. Yes. And she's like, yeah, I'm getting like 8,000 for fights. And then like. In I, your pocket. I fought like. I know. <laughs> I got 
thousand pound pipe. She's like, <laughs> yeah, like she's like, yeah. And then I fought like last year for like five hundred dollars, and I was like, oh shit, are you serious? And so me and Nikisa were like, all right, we should pay this girl for this card the most she's ever been paid, just to do this fight on our card, and. Boom, like, that started a change in just on the woman's side of things, giving her the biggest payday, then continuing to do that, and then getting her up to seven figures, getting her in a million-dollar payday. And now the the women are just getting paid more and more and more, and that's how it should be. What's your company? To, from what I'm hearing, you want to start your own promotion company? You want to have your fighters and everything? Yeah, I have I have most valuable promotions. Um and we're just slowly growing it. Right now, we're up to five fighters signed, four, four or five. Um, Ashton Silva, Shadeja Green, Amanda Serrano. Yeah, I saw Shadeja Green fight before already. Yeah. Yeah, so. Black chick, right? Yeah. Beast, the sweet strong, Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super strong, slick, super exciting fighter. And we're, we're trying to get her to challenge for the w, WBC belt. Then she's going to work her way into a fight with Clarissa Shields. And that'll probably be, oh, the, that's be cool. the second biggest um, or the first. It might beat out Amanda Serrano versus Katie Taylor. But that'll be another massive, massive women's boxing event. So we're excited for that. And uh, just growing the roster, we signed we signed Juana, uh, the, the kid from Euphoria. He's been boxing his whole life before he was an actor. But he has like almost 15 million followers across all of social media and he was the biggest unsigned boxing star so we signed him to most valuable promotions he's still an amateur but he's 17 years old and he's going to be a massive massive star he's slick got all the skills the charisma the built-in following the engagement so we're excited about him you, you stated you would fight a UFC fighter. Who would who would it be if you, Nick if you had Diaz, that chance? Right? Nate, yeah, I, I have Nate, the Nate Diaz. I have the ten million dollar offer for Nate um, to to go to the PFL and fight me in the cage. Yeah, I'm down. I'm, I think it'd be so. You're gonna be in his arena now. Yeah, yeah, and he seems he seems to be about it. I think since I beat his ass on Saturday, <laughs> he wants that. He wants that get back. Are he you gonna have Logan help give you some tips? Like you know, this is this is uh, his world right there. Yeah, like he he's a great Logan's a great wrestler, so I'm sure he'll help me prepare in terms of uh, in terms of wrestling. We got Johnny here. He's an NCAA All American wrestler. Oh shit, so Johnny. We're gonna start to. We're gonna start to wrestle. Don't fuck him up, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta fight, Johnny. Chill out. <laughs> so yeah, we're. who's who's the poor sparrer that you have that you gotta like knock him out? Because my, who, I, I can imagine who you had, Mike. Who was the sparrer that you, you would knock out? By this is interesting, right? <laughs> Sparring partners are interesting. In the ring, I have to kick my ass every day. My sparring partner. So what? I said, I said, wow, this guy's going to be a great fighter one day. I better put him under my undercard. And one day, I <laughs> oh, no wonder you're sparring. <laughs> so this is what happens. I realize happens. Guys that kick your ass every day in the gym, as soon as they get in a fight, fucking lights, yeah. popcorn, fucks them up. No, <laughs> they <Don't> freeze. Do- <laughs> <laughs> I said, motherfucker, why didn't you fight nah. him like you fight me in the gym? <laughs> fight him like you fight me in the gym. <laughs> they froze. <laughs> no. <laughs> The guy's a bum. <laughs> the guy's killing him. The guy's a bum and he's beating the shit out of my sparring partner. Is your sparrer a bum too? I mean, no, 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 but that's how it is, man. It's 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 two different sports. Mm. Boxing in the gym with big gloves and headgear yeah. is easy compared to going under the lights, getting hit with the small gloves. Mm. Your whole family's there. There's oh. people cheering against you. The lead up, the nerves, the anticipation. It's a completely different sport than the sparring. And it's so like that's why and shit. <laughs> that's why you need to take the, it's hard to take all the things you can do perfectly in sparring into the ring because it's just so overwhelming. But my job in the, listen, this is my um when I hire sparring partners, if you don't kick my ass, you're fired. Really? Yeah. You don't give me no hard work, don't you? If you go in there, you ain't trying to kill 130%, me. 130%. Like, yeah, if you're yeah. not trying to kill me, you got to go. Yep, yep. Yeah. 
it, the sparring's got to be harder than the fight, and that yeah. that was that was the, the case. fights become easy. That was the case for me with this camp. Is I was sparring. What? I was sparring like number one ranked IBF contender Vlad Shishkin. I was sparring Chad Dawson, uh, three time world champion, and man, we're just going at it, going at it, and <laughs> oh, I get into the fight, and I'm like. This is easy. <laughs> this is literally easy compared to these guys. The harder you train, the easier the fight is. Yep. Yep. Yo, the fight's crazy. won and before. The fight's won before. You got beef with Drake? He lost 250000 betting on you. <laughs> no, no, man. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love Drake. He bet man. on Nate Diaz. Yeah, but he, he's bet on. <laughs> he fucked he, up. <laughs> he bet on me against Tommy. Lost. Yeah. <laughs> then bet against me. Lost. Lost. He need, he need to stop know, betting. You gotta figure it out, but nah, man. I, when I saw that, I was like, I oh, respect. Yeah, no, he's right. Like you can't bet against a Diaz brother. Like growing up, like you respect to that. Like you know, he's not gonna he's not gonna switch up. But him him and I are cool, and I'm sure on the next one he's gonna put the money back on me. I'm back. I ain't really leave, but I'm back. Damn, so he double timed in the hole. He lost twice. He lost twice. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. You know you know what? What he bet two fifty. That's like buying a candy bar to him. <laughs> In that trip, that's like going to the store and buying a candy bar to him. <laughs> yeah, Drake is a big gambler, yeah. man. So I guess that was a drop in the bucket for him. Yeah. I heard love was in the air, though, uh, during your fight. McGregor was, like, kicking it with Saweetie. Like, uh, what's up with that? Man, <laughs> that guy is lost. Honestly, like, I don't even, I don't even know if, like, I don't even feel like... I feel weird talking about it because it's like comes across as like shit talk. But at this point, it to me it's not even really shit talk. Like I almost feel bad for the guy. He's like clearly coked out and like drunk and lost. Like he's going yeah, off yeah. going wow. off on me on Twitter with the, all these like crazy exchanges, like saying crazy shit. And then deleting the tweets like 10, 12 minutes later, like realizing probably that what he said was crazy and just like, w like what is he doing? Like, if, you, if you're fighting and winning, you can go around and talk all this shit and say whatever you want. But when you're in that place and you're cheating on your wife and you're <laughs> oh, just shit. all wow, over the, the place. Police. Shit. It's like, no, but it's like, it's like at some point you just oh, look, shit. you just look like an idiot. <laughs> like actually. I didn't know he was married. He's married. <laughs> with kids, would that would he be a four? And that's what I'm saying. He's like he's like yeah. hitting on Sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like the dude's lost, and like, I, I, and again, this isn't even talking shit. This is why I don't even want to like talk about. I mean, it's I'm out like, there. Yo, it's like, out there. Yeah, it's out. Everyone there. sees what, it. What did he say to Sweetie? I call her Sweetie. I can't get that. Oh, other. So, so, so I can't get the sir. It's Sweetie. I didn't go. To, <laughs> Wheaties and Wheaties. Wheaties. I think, I think, I think the breakfast is champions. <laughs> Sweeties, the Wheaties of champions. She's the breakfast of champions. McGregor. You, you've stated you wanted McGregor. Like, you think that would ever happen in the future? Yeah. No, I mean, I think it can happen. The problem is, is that his boss is Dana White. He has to get Dana's approval to do everything. So he can't do whatever he wants. So he okay. acts like this big Pimpin'. bad. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Macaronski Pepe <laughs> Yeah so he He can't do whatever fight he wants So mm. he has to get his dad's permission um, but His I'm, dad's permission I'm down <laughs> I'm down for the fight I'm always down I'll, I'll take on any of these guys And I said I'd fight him in MMA too And I'm, I'm down with that as well um, But he just doesn't seem like he's in the headspace to fight He's been off of the USADA list, clearly on all sorts of shit. I'm looking at your sneakers. You ever think about getting a, a line? I've thought about doing my own boxing yeah, shoe. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, this company wanted to do something, actually. This exact company. I don't know. I don't know. Though. Clothing's a tough business. Not if you're the right guy to promote your clothing line. You might be right. When everything's, you're out with your everything's tough for the average guy. You know, the average guy. Mm. I've, I've just been in clothing for so long. Mm. Like I've, that's where I first like started was selling merchandise, and you just like a fucking hustle. 
Why don't you just do a collabo with Mike? Let's do do a oh, glove. Shit is big. We get boxing gloves, all yeah, that shit. Go. Hanging out. Let's South go. South of France, talking shit. <laughs> South of France. Yeah, that's a good scenario right there. Uh, Puerto Rico is pretty cool. It depends on where you go, because um, what's that one point say? You got to be careful where you go. Some of them places mm. could be tricky. Yeah, I love it. I love Puerto Rico. For me, it's amazing to like just be there and focus and focus on boxing and there's no distractions down there very peaceful very calm my brother's down there so mm. yeah it's you, you, you do all that yoga stuff all that meditation like, yeah you do all that stuff like uh, you have a yeah. quiet room there where you shit i'm gonna talk yeah i sit in the backyard and meditate really yeah i think i think in terms of like boxing and like mentally preparing yourself for war and like the pressure of the fight and all the business stuff and just the, all the chaos that goes on on a day-to-day -day basis, I think you could, like, lose your mind if you're not meditating, like, the daily anxiety and such. And just making sure the mind right's the most important thing. I'm meditating, and, like, at, in the morning before I even start my day, before I get up and get on my phone, I meditate, and then at night, 10, 15 minutes as well. Are you addicted to the ice baths? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Three shit. times a day. I don't know how y'all do that shit, man. Excuse me? Like, you stay in an ice bath for, like, it's a minute. Yeah, you just start getting hot, and you start burning, you get um, cold freeze. Yeah, the the ice bath is it's game the best changer. Though. It's the best, though. You have to do it. Game you changer. You have to do it. Wow. It tests your courage, too. Mm. Yeah, it's like a daily mental battle. And it's like doing something... So every single day that you don't want to do, like even even as much as I do it, I'm still like, uh, okay, here we go, <laughs> here we go. But it helps with anxiety and just energy and just one of my favorite things. You ever do sure. hyperbaric chamber? Yeah. yeah, after bath. Lots of hyperbaric, lots of ice baths, red light therapy, just everything for recovery. You know, Mike is training people now. Would you, I mean, that would be, that would be training just, this Hey, guy. listen, it's a one-night stand with, with Francis, okay? Yeah. Don't, be, don't be selling me out to people. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me, man. Are you helping, are you helping Francis yeah. train? Yeah, he's doing okay, too. Let's go. I love that. I love that. Is there a Mike Tyson fight that you remember, like, growing right, up? Hey, it's his show. Like, no, nah, I want to know what, I mean, he's a boxer. Shit. I think um, <laughs> when you became the youngest heavyweight world champion. You weren't born. Were you born? No, but I've seen the, oh. the, the replays. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it was, was the year I was born. I think, it, I think it was. I, no, no. What? You're a 90s baby. 90s, right? yeah. Yeah, I was 86. Mm. When, I won the t when I won the title, it was 1986. I was 20. And um, shit, it happened so fast, I forgot everything. <laughs> it happened so fast. Before you know it, you're going to be an old man. It happens so quick. You don't even expect it. The time flies right by. You know, I just, I just want to know, what are the particles that we don't see that makes us old? You know, because it has a lot to do with the, um, the atmosphere mm. and everything, too, with the age process. That's like in some countries, some people live longer than others, like Japanese people. They have the well, they got the diet. They got the, the oh, way of yeah, living, cultural. Food, yeah. yeah. There's always like some cultural well, way of living saw longer. Obese, um, listen, you never saw, very rarely you saw an obese old person. Right? Have you ever saw somebody 65? That, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I remembered anybody looking like that. that. That's the truth. <laughs> yeah. You um, don't see too many healthy, um, overweight people. Why do people shrink when they get old? You know why? Because we lose our math. As we get older, we lose our mass. That's why muscle, that keeps us alive. Our mm. muscles keep us alive. We're fungus. We like the animals. We just break down. Where are you going to be at, uh, Jake, when you're like 70, 80? Where are you gonna Hopefully like? alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first and foremost. I don't know. Just being like a dope grandpa somewhere, just fucking drinking whiskey on a porch, mm. just chilling, kick, kick back on a ranch somewhere. I see that too, me and my grandkids and... I'm telling my kids that I love their kids more than I love them. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what it is. I love my little kids because I love them more than I love you. It's probably more fun. Like, there's less responsibility. What? Yeah. 
Yeah. I want to be with them, hang out with them, talk shit. Mm. <laughs> Buying them stuff. Like I didn't buy them. <laughs> <didn't bother. laughs> Spoil them. I think that's what grandpas and grandmas yeah. are good for. It's just being the fun one. When the parents just get too serious. Mm. That's my grandpa was the one who like really let me like have fun. He like built me these cars and these like electric things to drive around on. And I got to go in his Corvette and we went fast. That was the first time I ever went fast. We would build these toy cars together. So I think that's what the grandparents are for. Tell me about your family still around, your mother and father still around. Yep. Mom and dad thriving. My mom just turned 60, Mm. crushing it. Absolutely crushing it. You know, 60 is not what 60 was 30 yeah. years ago. Yeah. 60 is very young now. It's crazy. She can do cartwheels, handstands, jumping mm. around, playing tennis. Like, she's a superwoman. It's crazy. It's it, I'm excited because that means, like, part of her genes are in me. So I'm going to be young and hopping when yeah. I'm old. The old troll. <laughs> Maybe tro- he trolling people even when he's 60. Probably. <laughs> Probably. The older troller. <laughs> the older troller. <laughs> the older troller. Does your, does your mom go through anxiety watching you fight? Like yes. Screaming and going crazy? Or some people got different experiences with their moms. Yeah, she's like. Does she think Nate was going to kick your ass? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, but they, they're always nervous, you know, mm-hmm. like. Just the the build up and all the shit talk. She doesn't she doesn't love all of that, but she knows this is what I love to do, and she knows how hard I work and how prepared I am. So that gives her that safety feeling. But at the end of the day, you're watching the person you love like mm, getting get beat up hit in the face. <laughs> regardless, you, you keep doing this. We be hearing about you sixty years from now. No, no, no. It'd be more YouTubers fighting by then. Yeah, you'd be the first. Well, a lot of them. A lot of them don't take it super seriously. That's the problem. But well, now that you do, some yeah. will. Some will. They need to step it up. You need to tell them that. <laughs> you need oh, to yeah. tell them that say right now. <laughs> hey, influencer boxing, take it more seriously for you real. Say for real, like really lock in, like three month camps, two a days every day. Get yourself a serious team. Don't just go in there and pity put <laughs> around. If you're gonna do it, do it right. Honestly, That's otherwise, right. or you gonna get fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to get fucked up. It's the hurt business, motherfucker. Yep. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Like, a hundred years from now, your name will be yeah. known. Yeah. Jake Paul. Like, what no, the fuck? It'd be, it'd be another YouTuber fighting for the title. <laughs> and then it, it first started with Jake Paul. The first. <laughs> the first super <laughs> influencer on the scene. It was Jake Paul. <laughs> All these men have to give a congratulations <laughs> to Mr. Paul to make this possible. Isn't that crazy, man? Like, you, you bypass the whole YouTube shit, like, to beat all those guys up, to get out of that, to be in the professional world. Sell, like, more, yeah. sell more tickets than any fighter in the business now. It's crazy. It is. It is crazy. It's really crazy. It, it seems like a dream, right? It's surreal. It must be feel like a dream. My life feels like a fucking dream. <laughs> I know you tripping. Damn, yeah. I fucking just started boxing. Everybody hates me. These people love me. But I'm wealthy. I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> How did this happen? Yeah, like, what's I going know, on? Uh, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> How did we get here? It, it is. It's like a video game or something. Is there on any other boxers like Mike that fuck with you? Like, legends? But they, you know. Yeah, I think a, there, there's a lot of people behind the scenes, you know. Um, that hit you, DM you. Oscar little. De La Hoya is really? always, you know, we're always messaging back and forth. Um, Manny Pacquiao shows love. Holyfield. Wow. Um, lots of people, man. Anthony Joshua, Earl Spence, Shakur Stevenson, Devin Haney, even Tyson Fury shows love. Like, wow. all of these people. Um, cool. David Benavidez. Even Canelo's showing respect now. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's cool. That's why, but that's why I say thank you to this guy. Because he was the first one that was like, yo, this is something that everyone should be paying attention to. And he was co-signing me before everyone. So mm. that means the world to me. No, but it's true. If it wasn't true, I wouldn't have said it. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. <laughs> but some, pe- I, some people are afraid of the truth. <laughs> Most Ooh, people are afraid of the truth. That's why they say the truth will set you free. Mm. It's going to make you miserable first. Yeah. <laughs> make you miserable, but it'll set you free. Facts. Is there any major boxer you'd want? Like a, like a, real, a lot of fans are like, what real boxer would he want? Like, like a... 
a super professional. Yeah, I said I said two years ago. I, well, like I, the Floyd fight in, always has interested mm-hmm. me. Um, I don't think he wants that smoke, um, but I've said two years ago, Canelo. Oh, and wow. everyone was like, "Oh, you're a fucking idiot." Oh, like he's a, he would kill you. He would kill you. And what I always said was, "Yeah, but like, what about in four years?" And so that's two years from now. Mm. I just went ten rounds. He fights twelve rounds in two years. If you don't think I can go twelve rounds with the best of the best, it's then, not you're, psychological. then you're shitting yourself. So I, I, that's that's who I want, and I'm bigger than him. So that gives me an advantage. That makes it more of an even fight because of the weight difference. So that's why I think it becomes super interesting. Can he fight a 185 pound kid who can punch like crazy? I know he can. But I want to do it on a big stage because I believe I can win. Wow. Everything you do is on a big scale. What do you mean I want to do it on a big scale? Do you know small scale? No. (laughs) Big scale. (laughs) Yeah. You yeah. know, looking outside in, everybody looks at you like you look like you're happy all the time. What was your lows? Like, where was it at? Was it in Ohio? Was it, like, before you popped off or? Oh, man. It's all, all the time there's lows. I think the world we live in, it just everyone only puts their highs out there, like, emphasizes their highs. It's what we're trained to do on social media is look when I'm having fun. Look you know, look at how good my life is. But you're never showing the moments where you're doubting yourself, where in this past camp, I'm so just like the pressure is so much to do a 10 round fight. And I don't know if I could do it. I'm coming off of a loss and my Mm. coaches are pushing me 22 rounds. And I just sit on the side of the ring, like crying, like teary eyed, like just just defeated by the sport of boxing, like not having a good day in the gym, like not knowing if I can even do this. And, and it's cool that you, you know, it's, you got to have those lows because you got to have those bad days because that's what makes the good days, you know, greater. And your team can uplift you and push you through those moments. And I deal with a lot of like anxiety all the time and just always, thinking about things and boxing is what pulled me out of my my lows and my lowest point which was in los angeles being 21 years old drinking and partying all the time Mm. surrounded by the wrong people chasing this like weird lifestyle for whatever reason to fill this like void of validation and just not being in tune with myself losing myself you know going down this wrong path, no routine, no discipline, not giving a fuck about anything, no consequences in life. And that would have just led me to like jail or dead. And that's why when boxing entered my life, I like sobered up, started training all the day, got healthy, got my mind right, started doing ice baths, started focusing. And I gave me purpose again, like pulled me out of that place. I was like this just sad, sad, lonely person in Los Angeles, like by myself, surrounded by a lot of people, but by myself and just alone. And that was just like dark and scary and just, Mm. yeah. LA is could do that, man. LA is like, ugh. Especially when you're a kid, throwing millions of dollars, throwing the media, throwing the press, throwing the people who want to leech off of you and profit off of you and steal from you and... Take advantage of you. Damn. And yeah, I just had to like figure it out for myself. But it but I'm glad I went through that because and at the time I didn't know why I was going through that shit. And it was seemed scary and it seemed dark and I didn't know what it was all for. Um, but it made me so much stronger. So much stronger, so much more wise and gave me so much more experience. But it wasn't easy to come out to the other side of that all. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So tell That's us. It. You, um, you like that lady over there a lot? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about this. Yes, this is... Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, lo- I love her. I love her so much. She's she's the best, the sweetest soul in the world. Wow. The happiest person, the most beautiful and I'm gonna marry her. Well, that's, is that your ring right there? Crying right now. No, no, not yet. No ring yet. But what about the promise ring and shit? 
I don't know. <laughs> Didn't we have a promise ring, baby? Oh, yeah, I gave her a ring that's like hugging her. Wow. Yeah, I tried, though. I love it, man. But I gave her a ring that's like hugging hands because mm. it's like a long distance relationship. She lives in the Netherlands. She's a five time world champion speed skater. Wow. The best in the world. So Lindsay Vaughn. Oh. <laughs> But yeah. Oh, you do the, the axles and all that stuff? Yeah, no, yeah. The four. Oh, okay, my bad. Mm-hmm. Racing, racing. Yeah, yeah. racing. She I goes like 40 miles per hour. You ever tried skating with her? I tried. It's a trip. It didn't work it out, huh? Not good. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. TysonPro.com. Yeah. That's where, that's, where, that's where they sell it. That's where they come from. TysonPro.com. <laughs> and then we got to look and check the globe. TysonPro.com. You got to get this. Your head too big, man. You got to loosen that. Yeah, it's too. So I'm figuring it out. Yeah. I got a big head. It goes with the wash. Netherlands. It actually goes exactly with the wash. Should go with the rest of the The fit. Netherlands have the biggest flower production in the world. It's all the flowers in the world come from there. So I called them up and I wanted them to give me my flowers. <laughs> <laughs> right, baby? Yeah, I called them up and wanted them to give me my flowers. No, when I got That's there, cool. it's just all these like fields of flowers. In the yeah. Netherlands? Yeah. See? See? They, all, they produce all the flowers in the world. The most flowers in the world. These are fire. This is nice. Thank you, man. No, it's not pleasure, man. Hit the bag well, 14 with 14 ounce. With bad gloves. Yeah. Got the tattoo on there. Let's go, man. Thank you. Ballin. Okay. Tysonpro.com. Tis Ice and Prizzo for the street people. (laughs) 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 Okay. Listen, you got to talk to these people. They're um, 160. I don't know, but I'm sure we don't have as many viewers as you. But talk to those viewers and tell them, when they go, tell them when they go to see you again and tell them what you're doing, what you're selling. Just give them your life story. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to be back fighting soon, dropping a song. Just happy to be here, man. Just going to keep on training, living my life, and uh, growing better. We just... My sports gaming company just dropped our fantasy app, so we have the best fantasy product available. Um, it's in 24 states. People can play in all the biggest states. We have 100 times multipliers, no pushes. Mm. So really excited about that to be the best fantasy sports app. So better picks. We have a Mariah Carey thing when they come in. <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> the fantasy world. Come to fantasy. Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Your Netflix specials out there too, right? Yes, yeah, Netflix. Uh, if you want to know untold. everything about you, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a good little piece. Mike's in it a lot. Yeah, so thank you very much. I like to show my. <laughs> 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 no, thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's a good look. Yeah, man, just living life. And, How did uh, you get in the Netherlands? <laughs> How did that happen? Well, when she's that. <laughs> When you're that beautiful, you gotta go. Oh, there's so many beautiful girls in there. How did you get this one? Um, DMs. (laughs) Oh, shit. Were you DMing all the girls then? Just her. Oh, okay. You saw that picture and said, I'm DMing them that, Mm -hmm. right? She stood out. Yeah, I asked her to be on my show. Oh, he lured you in. Yeah. He messed with your vanity. He attacked your vanity. He knew you'd give in to that. Yo. Yeah, she ignored me. Well. At he, first. Yeah. <laughs> At first. Yeah, you got you to gotta fight for your right to No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, I kept on. I was consistent. If it's easy, it isn't for me. <laughs> yeah, mm. it's, it's, it's good. But she, I definitely was playing again. I was like, yeah, come on the show. Oh. What did you say to her on the show? What the did you say? Hey, oh, so <laughs> yeah. did, did he um, propose to you on the show? No, he didn't. Not yet. Come on, man. Come on. Our four-month anniversary is in like four days, though. Right. You got the best man right here. You got the best man. Yeah. Four years. Four years. Go to eight years. 
to eight years. Next thing you know, you've been married for 40 years. Tyson could be the best man, you know. We need uh, a DJ. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll yeah. DJ. I'm like, chuck, 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 chuck. We'll do it in St. Mark's. <laughs> oh, oh that's some, <laughs> you have so many visitors. People, you have some, they have bombard parties in St. Bart's. Mm. They're not paying shit. Yeah. What a place. <laughs> He's thinking about it. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> You gotta go to St. Bart's to relax, man. Yeah, Chill yeah. out. Stress. So let's free. go. Let's get out of here. Let's Have you been the there PJ. before? Have you been there before? I've never been to St. Bart's. But 50 of them never took you there? Nah, I don't know. No, I've been everywhere else, but I've never nah, been to St. Bart's. Not too many black motherfuckers yeah. go there. I want to say Martin. But it's like me. <laughs> Russell, who else is there? Hey, there's a couple of us there. <laughs> there are nine. Out of the whole scenario of a couple of hundreds, there's nine of us. Right? <laughs> there are nine rich motherfuckers. And there's some black motherfuckers that our friends take us that have a lot of money so they hang out with us. They want to spend money. I know Magic Johnson goes there a lot. I haven't seen him. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure he's been hanging out there before me. Oh, that's you know, crazy. They always, they always discover things before me. I'm normally laughing and I'm discovering good shit. So what am I going to see you at Rolling Loud, man? Like, come out to your record, Ooh, man. Ooh, Rolling Loud. Come out. Come out to Rolling Loud. Rolling Loud. Man. You got to be careful. You might get killed there or something. No, Rolling Loud is the only safe one, right? Yeah, it's safe. It's That's the only Mike. safe one. Everything else is death. Go anywhere else, you're going to die. Rolling, yeah, Rolling Loud is safe. I know those people are safe. But that other shit, nigga. Would that be a cool thing? Like you come out from the fifty thousand, you perform like a record with somebody, or you you, you got your own single, or would I'd that be, be down? Some, uh, you have more haters though. I'd be uh, down. More black people like them than white people. They're like, yeah. nobody hate them than white motherfuckers. <laughs> you get that a lot. You're like the 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 Bieber effect. Like all oh, the black people love you. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But Mike. I ain't, anybody tell me anybody he ain't shit kicking ass my little white motherfucker. Ain't guy, a white guy came to me says. and said, He's great, he's good. <laughs> whatever Mike says. You know, you, you meet a lot of like cool guys like you, but you you've never been the one that kinda like wants to be something else, like you know, like a wannabe, like, you know, you, you got the money and, He's who he wanna be yeah, now. I like the yeah. I like the fact that you you don't give a fuck and you're you. Well, sometimes You're you gotta extra. care. You gotta care sometimes because sometimes mm -hmm. some people got a bigger fuck you, not give a fuck hand. So you gotta be cool sometimes. You gotta pick your fights. See what I'm gotta saying? Pick your fights. Yeah, I think it's just me having fun. Yeah. And then once you're having fun and doing exactly like what you wanna do, then that's what people will be like drawn to. Yeah, you and for, for some it's reason. Just authenticity. Yeah, but some reason having fun makes people angry too. You know, so I'm like, hey, what the fuck he's having fun for? I can't pay my fucking bill. What <laughs> the fuck he's having fun for? I can't carry my weight in my relationship. The fuck he can. Uh, you hate that, right? You hate the narratives from social media, the way they just like. Yeah, but it's like, you. okay, I'm having fun now because I didn't have fun for a decade. And oh, I wow. sacrificed mm. my childhood. Wow. And just dropped out and worked for 14 hours every single day maniacally. To the point where now it's fun. What do you know that about first? not having a job? I always had a job. <laughs> exactly. What do you know about not having one? Oh, no, I don't know that. <laughs> I worked at like, yeah, I don't know, Burger King. About, he had every, let's look at this black I worked at King. King. I don't know. I was uh, stealing yeah. the register. I was robbing the money from the register. Like. You were stealing? Yeah. Okay. hundred dollars a day. See, he's not a criminal. He's still not. He's a <laughs> it's too late now. I mean, shit. I don't want to get locked he's up. He's like that non-threatening black man, but very intelligent, though. I mean, you know, I try, man. I don't... <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you tell these people about your life that you want to do? <laughs> oh, yeah. Look, I, I just... Man, I don't know. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> tell them how to get in touch with you again. Um, you, you guys can call me at... Uh, my phone number is not... <laughs> <laughs> they already have your phone number. Yeah, they you probably they already <laughs> have your phone they number. They fucking do, bro. Trust I get these me. text messages. Yeah. Hey, Jake. Who's the fuck is <laughs> I got your number from the da 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 da. Oh. I'm like, I don't respond. Fuck. Now they're gonna keep on going. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's all about black and block. My wife told me how to block them out. <laughs> really? Block their numbers and stuff. They gotta call me from another number, and when they call me from that number, you I block, block it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they. They'll get I number. canceled them. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You know, it's so easy to get your number, even if, if, it's, not un- if, yeah. it's, not, if it's not listed. It's so easy. That's the easiest thing in the world. But technology is too easy now. Ask, ask, um, with artificial intelligence. What's Mike Tyson's number? And they should be like, yeah. doo, 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 doo. and that. they can call you with a fake voice. Yeah, I hate that. That's shit. what's crazy is they could like mimic your mom's voice and call you. Trippy. Fuck you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't know what other names are out there. Like, the one out there, fuck it. Yeah, just like huh? Hoff Crawford. Come on, Crawford. <laughs> Terrence Crawford. Oh shit. Jake Paul and Terrence Crawford. Jakey and Terrence. <laughs> You're going to promote it? hundred percent. hundred percent. Man. The, 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 Omaha, the, the Omaha octopus against the Cleveland um, um, Clinic. <laughs> Cavalier. <laughs> the Omaha Cleveland octopus. Clinic. Terrence. He lives in Omaha, Nebraska. I, I had no idea. Well, I only knew one black person that lived there. Courtney Kellogg's. And I heard Kellogg's is in Nebraska. Oh yeah, you talked the about company that. is in Nebraska, so that he must have been like one of the slave people back in the day. So that was like a coincidence, or that was like no, he's, he used yeah. to be a fighter in the amateurs. Okay. But the fact that um, the people that invented Kellogg's Cereal. from there, mm-hmm. and his name is there, and these are white people, and he's a black person with their name, slavery, slavery intervention. Oh, so you learned something new today, Jake? Yeah. <laughs> Jake is like, what? I learned a lot. That's when you thing. eat your cereal, man, you gotta look at the cereal like, damn, man. They enslaved niggas. My black people. My friends are niggas. I can't, I can't, I'm sorry. The four poppers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I am so, so sorry. Oh my God, man. I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, help me, please. Well, one thing we got is the, rem- the, the rematch will probably be either Nate. Or uh, Tommy. I think you should come up. When you come up, you should be fucking rapping, spitting. Oh, you rap, come up. Nate is fake. It's just, <laughs> I'm going to go on a date after I kick it down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, come on, what, man. motherfucker? <laughs> come out to a, my own rap song. Yeah, don't have to walk in. You do your own shit. Big as you are, you do your own rap. Now you got to pay Lil Dirk shit. <laughs> I'm fucking up the money game. Lil Dirk got your shit. He's not cheap and shit. Or come out to that T.I. He loves that T.I. song. How's that shit? T.I. Um, Hefe. Hefe, yeah. Come out to Hefe from Mike. Hefe. Bad like motherfucking beat. bad song. Hefe, mommy, I can Linda. This has been another great episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Mike Tyson. I'm who kid. I'm Jake Paul. And that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a billion, a bean that go like a cinnamon. Cleaver couldn't see the vision there. Me and Ron let him witness it. Kel's got them all listening. I've been feeling like I'm Johnny Depp on a blind box in the Caribbean. The goal is never to be thin, man. Security keeping the effing in.